Bonjour à tout le monde et uh, bienvenue uh, aujourd'hui à cet événement spécial qu'on a organisé sur les plaidoyers et la recherche sur les violences basées sur les gens et uh, qui sera très focalisé sur la présentation du forum sur les violences uh, sexuelles de la recherche en, uh, en anglais Sexual Violence Research Initiative qui aura lieu uh, cette année en septembre 2022. Donc, on veut vous présenter le forum. Le forum est organisé par SVRI en Afrique du Sud. Je vais switcher à l'anglais tout de suite, mais vous êtes très habitués à m'en voir en français. Non, mais aujourd'hui, on a nos invités, ils sont plutôt anglophones, donc on, on va modérer en anglais. Et pour suivre en français, vous allez en bas de votre écran à droite et vous choisissez dans le dessin du monde l'interprétation qui vous convient. Donc, dans le canal principal, on va continuer en anglais. Alors, ce qui est dans l'interprétation, vous allez suivre notre interprète. Merci beaucoup aux interprètes pour être là aujourd'hui, qui ils vont vous rendre à disposition eh, la langue eh, de votre convenance, donc les Français dans ces cas. Donc, sorry, I will switch in English. <laughs> so today we are, we are here to, for a special event we have organized with the Sexual Virus Research Initiative to talk in particular about the SVRI forum, but also to start a conversation on advocacy and research in the region for gender-based violence in emergency and our priority as GBV actors in West and Central Africa. Shiva, slide please, or Vivian, I don't remember who is controlling. Slide please. So, The agenda of today is with the introduction of the event, and then we will have a SBRI focus discussion with our MVT. And then uh, um, there will be a point on the global shared agenda on research for ending violence against women and girls, and the brainstorming a little bit, so Q&A uh, about our vision and our ideas for Western Central Africa. The MVT we have to today, as I little bit say already, the surprise in the introduction, uh, are Lizzie Lotz, who is the partnership specialist of SBRI, and Elizabeth Dartel, who is the executive director. Elizabeth has more than 20 years of experience in research and policy making. She's among the founder of the SBRI, which has become during the years a very important event for the leading the thoughts about ending gender-based violence and violence against children, actually violence against women and violence against children to be very precise. And Liz is the, uh, is so the director with the OSVRI in South Africa. And we also have Liz Lilotz, who is the partnership specialist. She has 12 or more years of experience in the development sector too. And she has been working in organizing the SVRI forum since the very first a forum in 2009. So here are our entities. It was a very short presentation. I could have said much more because uh, they really have a good experience, a great knowledge about the research on, on GBV. But I will give them the floor in a few minutes so they will uh, show um, the, uh, the learning we have uh, very soon. So next slides, please. The idea of the event today is uh, in our specific context on Western Central Africa, if you can make also appearing the, the, the next, um, um, the writing. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the context is that SVRI is one of the largest, probably surely the largest in my opinion, uh, event or research about Uh, violence against women and violence against children. It started in 2009 with the forum. Each two, three years, we have had a forum, and it's a growing, growing, growing group of people thinking about how to eliminate this violence from the world. So from Western Central Africa, we have noticed that we don't have a meaningful participation. We are missing, in particular, French-speaking research um, and French-speaking uh, people in the, in, in the forum itself. Abstract are not many, uh, and uh, it's missing in the room. There is a lot of Africa, but there is these pieces of Africa which is less represented. So we would like to have more participation, more information, 
and more thinking about what is important for this region of the world, which has very high rate of child marriage, very high rate of uh, uh, female genital mutilation, IPV is a problem, and uh, many other issues. So our working group, uh, it, it's thinking about how uh, invest more in learning, and that's the context why we have organized this event. We want to target all the GBV experts in the region, also if they don't work directly in emergency, even if, even if our specialty is emergency, and we want to stimulate emergency actor to get uh, uh, more uh, interesting research and in what works to eliminate violence. But we are, we really, our target audience today is really the world region and who is interested in understanding better what is SVRI and how to participate and which can be the topics that we want to learn at Invest More. And the outcome of the session, so is really to inform you about the SVRI forum, stimulate interest, and uh, also clarify some guidance in how to participate participate and also which is the current agenda of the research that we have uh, on the floor. So I'm done. I'm giving, uh, I'm passing the ball to our NDTs and I don't talk anymore. I will be back probably to moderate the Q&A at the end. Slide please. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. And um, I'm grateful to be here today to tell you more about our amazing conference. You definitely do not want to miss the SVR forum this year. Like Naomi said, my name is Liesl. I work as the partnership specialist for the Sexual Violence Research Initiative, the world's largest network on violence against women, violence against children, and other forms of violence stemming from gender inequality. Thank you, Naomi and Alex and your team for making this meeting possible. I have with me today our executive director, Liz Dardnell, who will speak more about our research priority setting. But for now, I would like to invite you to our seventh international conference, the SVRI 2022, to be held in Cancun, Mexico from the 19th until the 23rd of September this year. So you can go to the objective slide, please. So for today, I would like to give you a brief introduction to the Sexual Violence Research Initiative, announce the SVRI Forum 2022, key dates and the website, provide information about forum themes, provide information on abstract submission and participation in the forum, and to provide information on partnership opportunities at Forum 2022. Next, please. So just a little about the SVRI. We are a feminist, women-led nonprofit organization. We were established in 2003, recognizing the inequities and inequalities and the lack of resources dedicated to research on violence against women and violence against children in low and middle income countries. For this reason, we work to achieve a world free of violence against women and violence against children through improved practices and prevention programs informed by evidence with a focus on low and middle income countries. The SVRI has more than 7,000 members, which include researchers, practitioners, donors, activists, survivors, policymakers, and more from all regions in the world. We work across four pillars. The first is building evidence, and some of you might know already the SVRI research grant, of which we launch a call annually, strengthening capacity, promoting partnerships, and influencing change. And here's where you will hear from Liz and our priority setting work. Next, please. Every two years, we host the SVRI Forum. So it's been running since 2009. Cancun will be our seventh international conference and we expect over 600 delegates to gather over five days to connect, share and learn. And I'll add all of the um, links for you once I'm done with the presentation. Over the five days, we have one day of capacity building pre-conference workshops. We have three days of conferencing and the Friday is usually dedicated to participant driven events or what is generally known as satellite events. The forum offers a space for exhibition stands, for networking, for well-being, self and collective care. And you can see there in um, the slide, it's just the numbers over the years up until forum 2019. Next slide, please. 
So a little bit more about our principles. So at the forum, we commit to principles of learning and collaboration, where our delegates come together to design solutions for ending violence against women and violence against children, and to build knowledge, collaborate, and expand their networks with others in the field. We also commit to diversity, equality, and inclusion, meaning that we acknowledge power dynamics inherent in research. We nurture young and emerging researchers through bursaries and also through a presentation mentoring program. We also award a forum prize to the best young research presentation. Next, please. So here you can just see what some, some people have said about um, the forum. I love, love, love the Esperar Forum. It's my favorite conference. People have said that um, how they have just connected to stories of survivors, um, how it was really powerful for them and just um, generally about connecting with people in the field and just building lifelong relationships and friendships. Next slide, please. So why Mexico? We held year long consultations with multiple partners across Latin America and the Caribbean and also across East Asia and Pacific. We have established a wonderful and supportive relationship with a local, um, with a local co host at the Regional Center for Multidisciplinary Re Research at the National Autonomous University of Mexico. They've been incredibly supportive and helping us out with um, the basic logistics on the ground and organizing um, partnerships within the country. We've also, with the meetings that we've held across East Asia Pacific, we are looking at having the next forum in 2024 in um, Cambodia. We also felt that the current energy of the women's rights movement and the uprising against violence against women and violence against children in Mexico provided the, a unique moment in time for the SVRI forum to be hosted in Mexico and also for us to be able to contribute to those developments. It's also a very unique opportunity for us as we are working in the region more and more to really highlight research and programs and build partnerships in the region. Next slide, please. Just to provide you with some information on forum themes, we have taken the outcomes of SVRI Forum 2019, which was held in Cape Town, and multiple other processes and consultations with, with our members across the globe to help us determine the themes for SVRI Forum 2022. And this is what they are. So the first one is what works and what doesn't. And this theme really examines interventions or aspects of interventions, which has worked or not worked with specific groups and why they've worked or not worked. We also want to understand the impact of COVID-19. And this theme will explore how we have adapted and how we work in research and practice. Another theme is science of research into violence against women and violence against children. And this theme looks at how research can be strengthened. The fourth is integration and intersectionality. And this is really exploring innovative approaches in research and programming that will address violence against women and violence against children together or within other sectoral work. We also are looking at adaptation scaling up and costing in research and practice. And this is really looking at lessons learned from adaptation, scaling interventions, analyzing costing and so forth. We are also looking at promoting resilience, mental, mental health, mental well-being, self and collective care and kindness. So this is really also very close to our heart. And we try to promote also a conference that feels like a caring and intimate space. So we want to examine how to place self institutional and community care and kindness at the center of violence against women and violence against children research and interventions. A theme that uh, might be of interest to this group in particular is our humanitarian crisis uh, emergencies and the impact of violence against women and violence against children. So this has always been a key theme of the forum and we will highlight lessons learned from research and practice. Our final theme is decolonizing and democratizing research. And here we are really exploring indigenous knowledge and methodologies, practitioner-based learning, and other creative approaches to, to the work. Next slide, please. More on logistics. So we have confirmed the Hotel Paradisos in Cancun as our, uh, hotel, our hotel and venue. 
And what they are doing is they are providing an all-inclusive package, which means that you don't need per diems or any of that when you book your accommodation, everything is included. So that means your accommodation, there will be bottled water, soft drinks, wines and beer, that's all unlimited. Um, all your meals, your beverages um, is at the restaurants and the bars are available. Uh, there will be 24 hour room service, mini bar, late night snacks, and Wi-Fi access throughout the property. It also includes all of the taxes, the government taxes, which is 16% and 3% occupancy tax. That's all included. Your food and beverage gratuities, room cleaning, portage, and then of course, children under the age of four stay for free. So registration and pre-conference workshops, the costs for that are not included in this all-inclusive package. So that needs to be done separately. But when you book your accommodation, that's everything included. Go to the next slide, please. Important dates. So we are closing abstract submissions on the 28th of February. I'll also add the link for you now. Or Liz, if you can maybe add the link if you have it with you. We would um, notify, well, everybody that submitted, we've, we will notify about outcomes of the abstracts in early June 2020. <laughs> and then people can submit abstracts in Spanish and English for this conference. Registration is now open. The early registration is open until the 15th of May with discounted rates for low and middle income country delegates. And then you can also apply now for an exhibition stand as well as a participant driven event. Next slide, please. Just a little bit more on the abstract submission. So we have three types of presentations that will take place at the conference. The first is a research presentation. The next is programs or interventions and this will also include your practice-based knowledge and then we generally have what is really fun and really popular and you Amy, I think you've had a four-minute presentation as well the elevator pitch at 2019 um, this is basically giving your your work in four minutes uh, to your to your audience and it's it's a really fun way of presenting so for you to just some things to consider to have a successful abstract so what we do is we have put up the forms. It's a 350 word abstract. The title is additional to that. And it's sent out for blind review. And so two abstract reviewers will review each abstract. So um, the reviewers will be blind reviewing. Um, so you wouldn't know who, who reviewed and they wouldn't know who they are reviewing. What we will look at, and these are important to consider, is we will look at the relevance of the work. Does it address one of the key themes or areas of debate? And will it really be of interest to people at the forum? We also look at clarity. Um, are the objectives clear and well presented? Does it, does it serve a purpose to, to the field? The methods, um, are they are used appropriately? Will they be, um, well, is the data analysis and inter interpretation of the data, is that appropriate? So that's what we will be looking at, ethics, issues around ethics, um, whether that was addressed. And um, then also looking at significance. So are the findings significant? Does it address the so what? Does it provide new insights to the field? And then just the overall contribution. Does it contribute to new knowledge, to programs, to techniques, methods, or practice? And does it provide recommendations for future projects um, or policy making? And then very important to us is, is the work based in a low middle income country or resource poor setting? Next slide, please. And this is my final slide. So uh, we also offer numerous partnership opportunities and the unique opportunity to sponsor this great conference. So this is also for organizations to have their logos on the forum materials. So these opportunities may include supporting bursaries from low and middle income countries to attend the forum, to support plenary and keynote speakers, funding young professionals through the Young Professionals Program to attend the conference, ensuring well-being and self-care at the conference, ensuring language justice through um, providing interpretation services in all sessions, and then just an overall financial contribution, or if you've got 10 registrations in your organization or partners that you will send to the conference that automatically qualifies you as a partner. Now we do acknowledge that 
COVID plays a major role in people's decision to attend. And we are monitoring the pandemic really carefully with our partners and our conference organizers in, in Mexico. And should there be a huge change in the pandemic or how things are, are developing, we will explore a hybrid or fully virtual event, but we will only make that call towards the end of March. So at this stage, we are planning for a fully face-to-face -face event. We will take all the necessary precautions needed and follow all protocols to ensure the health, to try and ensure the health um, of all that attend. So we really hope you can join us in Mexico and please do feel free to ask any questions or write to us at forums at svri.org. I'll add that to the chat for you quick. Thank you, Naremi. I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much. Um, I will prefer that we have the question and answer at the hand, so there can be research requests or attendance requests. So I just go straight to Elizabeth. Thank you so much, Naomi, and thank you, Liesl, um, for sharing the ESPRA Forum. And we would love you all to be there. It's, it is an incredible event. So my um, presentation to you today is to talk about the development of a global shared research agenda that we've just recently um, completed. It took us over two years to develop and co-create with people in the field. So the, my, um, Naomi, would we mind moving to the next slide, please? Um, and the next slide. So the first question I think people ask is why, why a global shared research agenda? Why develop a research agenda at all? So for what we really know is the research agendas that historically have been develop, developed generally have been set by very few people, often those that are the loudest or the most senior in the room. And this has meant that funding is often misdirected, um, driven by academic researchers' own self-interests. And, and the community's interests, but generally driven by academic interests and or funders' interests. And rather than the communities that we really wanna be serving. So to, strength, to strength, so we, we really believe that to strengthen our understanding of violence against women and to prevent it, research has to be priority driven and carried out in a way that will provide sound, practical and empirical guidance for interventions, programs, policies and advocacy. So in partnership with the SVRI and the Equality Institute with support from Wellspring Philanthropic Fund and Swedish CEDA, we steered and facilitated the development of a global shared research agenda to address the gaps um, and to really redress the inequities in the way in which research agendas have been developed historically. And we are in doing so, we're working to challenge the traditional barriers to funding and bringing a more nuanced and equitable way to setting an agenda. So when we started this process, our vision for the Global Shared Research Agenda was to identify evidence gaps and priorities for research that can guide research expenditure and ensure that our very precious research resources are spent more effectively. We also work to assist researchers and funders, practitioners and policymakers with their own research planning and fundraising. And we thought that it can work as an advocacy tool to signal to stakeholders the areas of research that have ident been identified by the field as important and to serve as a monitoring tool for us, the field, um, including monitoring actual research and expenditure against priorities. And as a, a grant maker ourselves, we will be using the research agenda to guide our own grant making. Next slide, please. We really, um, believe that this had to be a very participatory process to ensure that multiple voices and important voices were included in the process. So it was quite an extensive process and it was driven by three different groups. There was a stewardship group which include to representatives from the SVRI and the Equality Institute, plus consultants with expertise in the methodology that we use to identify the priorities called the Chinri um, approach. We also had an advisory group of 30 plus experts in violence against prevent, women prevention and response representing multiple regions, as well as different um, backgrounds and experiences. And then on top of that, we created a global expert group, um, which represented over 500 people um, representing um, practitioners, frontline service providers, indigenous peoples, grassroots organizations, people with disabilities, LGBTQI plus populations and culturally and linguistically diverse groups. Next slide, please. So how did we, 
How did we do this, this really complex process? Guided by these incredible structures who were rich with diversity and passion for the work, we developed the GSRA in six steps, very highly participatory and extremely iterative, which provided many opportunities for feedback from the different governance structures and advisory group members. With the first step, we did a scoping review of the literature. And this really was to help us develop some set domains that the literature itself, the work, the research yourselves have done have identified as priorities. And that ultimately helped us identify four domains with which we we structured the entire process. And those were research and understanding violence against women and girls in its multiple forms, intervention research. Um, the third domain was um, research and improving existing interventions. And the fourth domain was methodological and me measurement gaps. And the, after, after we got the domains, the advisory group identified priority research questions under which each of these four, under each of these four domains by a series of virtual and online surveys. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we weren't able to meet face to face, but it did mean we were able to bring a lot more people into the discussion. As a result, the um, advisory group identified 41 questions. 10 questions under three domains and 11 under the fourth domain on me methodological measurement gaps. We then sent these questions out to the global expert group and through an online survey, they ranked and they scored the three, the, re the research questions against three criteria. The applicability of that research question to their own context and their own research interests, the effectiveness of this research question to actually be answering a question that's going to be helpful to improve policy and practice, and equity, the extent to which the research question is going to address equity. There are multiple criteria that can be selected using this Chinry model, but they were the three criteria that the advisory group and the global expert group identified as important. So after that, we got 214 responses from around the world. Next slide, please. And the findings, sorry, next slide. So what were the field, what did the field identify as gaps? The most highly ranked questions um, fell under domain Two, if you remember, that is intervention research, which suggested to us that how to intervene or prevent violence against women and girls was viewed as the field as most important and most needed right now. But the other top five were um, what types of interventions can effectively prevent multiple forms of violence and why, what are um, interventions are most effective for preventing intimate partner violence specifically, um, and also there was a question around feminist social movements or women's rights movements, as well as men's movements and the extent to which they positively or negatively influence um, perspectives related to experiences and perpetration of violence. And the other fourth top was the what interventions work to prevent sexual harassment in institutional settings, including workplace and educational settings and why, and what are the impacts of um, very under-researched forms of um, IPV on women and girls, including emotional and economic IPV. I just want to highlight here that when we were setting this up, we hadn't prioritised humanitarian and conflict settings in the process, but the advisory group strongly suggested or told us that we should include it, but really it is a gap in this process and there is a real need to update um, the existing priority setting research agenda that we did previously quite some time ago on conflict and humanitarian settings. And so I think that this is something um, we as a group with the GBVOR should be talking about. How do we, how do we, um, how do we develop a research agenda for conflict and humanitarian settings that will help you advocate for more resources to go to your important research? Um, and just to let you know that the World Bank also has a, a research process underway looking at the Gender, gender dimensions of forced displacement as well, which includes looking at gender-based violence. I just wanted to highlight, of the, the, there were a number of questions that did come out in humanitarian settings, but weren't within the top five or 10, but they were looking at what are the most effective tools or measures to measure traditional harmful practices against women and girls. Um, there was a question around how does conflict and fragility exacerbate multiple forms of violence? experienced by women and girls. And there is, this is, I think, also very important. How can promising violence against women prevention and response interventions for non-emergency settings be adapted to have effect 
in conflict and humanitarian contexts? And in what ways can justice institutes be held accountable and capacitated to survivor-centered and hold perpetrators accountable, especially in conflict and post-conflict settings? So those were the few um, out of the top 41 questions that came up as important, actually within the top 20, I think. So next slide, please. So what have we learned? We've learned that this, the advisory structures were really important throughout the process and that we have really developed a network of people really committed to making this process work. So the important lesson, if we were to do this again, and we are doing it regionally as well at the moment, and, and we're doing some topic specific work as well, is that we need to de develop and actively use our networks to promote the agenda. We really wanted um, many diverse, as many diverse voices involved in the process as possible. Um, and so the important second lesson for us was to closely monitor responses coming in so we could ensure that any um, gaps were addressed in real time. For us, practitioner voices were really important and we knew that frontline staff working during COVID were tired, overwhelmed, and were unlikely to complete a very complex questionnaire. So we reduced the number of criteria against which they ranked the questions, as well as um, trying to make the uh, survey as user-friendly as possible. So we sent the survey out in different batches, so it wasn't as overwhelming as a lot of these processes can be. In some, however, that the process really has highlighted that there are major research gaps in the violence against women field. And to be effective, it has to be used, that funders must use the agenda to increase investment in high quality and ethical research aligned with the global shared research agenda. That researchers ourselves have to use the global shared research agenda to inform our own research agendas where it's relevant to our contexts. That practitioners should use the agenda to guide partnerships with researchers on the evaluation of their interventions. And I think as a field, we can use it as an advocate to advocacy tool for more and better research resources to address critical gaps that the field has identified as important. Next slide, please. So the next steps, we are working um, with colleagues in Latin America and the Caribbean to unpack the global agenda to develop a regional agenda. And of course, these are really big <laughs> regions, so it is complex. So we do have to keep the process going and recognizing that research agendas must be nuanced and context specific as well. Um, but this is a guiding sort of process to help advocate for, for gaps that the field say are important and for more resources to go to research and to highlight what the field is saying is important. We're also talking with the World Bank um, and uh, some UN agencies to think about doing something similar in Eastern Europe and Central Asia. And our partners in, in um, East Asia Pacific will be unpacking the region, the, the agenda there. We're doing some um, priority setting with WHO and UNICEF in Ocenti for priorities for research on the intersections between violence against children and violence against women. And we are partnering with a comms agency for ongoing dissemination and communications. And it's really a great opportunity to be here, to be sharing this work. And of course, monitoring and evaluating the extent to which this is a useful tool for the field is also important to us. So we're working with colleagues um, and which will be starting in the, the next couple of months to really dig deep into whether people are, will use this agenda, are using this agenda, whether they see it as important, see it as a helpful tool and the extent to which the investment that has been made in the process um, is an important thing. And then the final thing for us is that we have really learned that the process is as important as the outcome. So having a proper participatory thoughtful process has been really valuable for ownership over the, the findings. Thank you so much. Back to you, Naomi. Thank you very much, Liz. Um, yeah, your last slides making me thinking a lot about our kids <laughs> and the region, because you know that we have, um, when I think about the last two years, we have published some paper on the impact of COVID in Western Central Africa. Uh, we have actors who have published a lot on the outcomes of the joint program of UNF, UNFP and UNICEF on child marriage and uh, FGM because they're turning years. Mm. And there is the briefing UNFP published on the uh, child marriage in emergency. Uh, we have the learning from the CASI initiative within uh, the GBVIUR and the CPIR in Niger. 
Uh, we have Plan, who is doing a study now on the impact uh, of GBV in the region. Um, we have the Girls in Crisis, published by pa Plan, and the advocacy on uh, child marriage too by Plan. Uh, so we have a bunch of things, you know, but it's not. We don't have a roadmap, and um, yeah, yeah. in particular, in particularly for emergency, we are probably working more on all the things related to adolescents and youth. A little bit more because of FGM and child marriage, um, but we also have the issues of violent extremism and uh, conflict related sexual violence, which is quite important in the region. And I have the feeling that we have lost a little bit of investment on this kind of research uh, in the region. Yeah. So that's that's really the brainstorming that you made me having <laughs> after your intervention, and I would like that people ask question or. Um, because the idea today is really these two things. If we have thinking about which are the things that we need to know better in the region, um, in particular for prevention, for instance, uh, of IPV, of child marriage and, and so on, or uh, and uh, the question about the forum, the preparation to the forum, the participation, the learning that you have and you want to share, or the curiosity, the things that you missed in the presentation by Liz Lee and, and Liz. So over to the floor. Uh, feel free to raise the hand or just unmute. I don't see I don't see anyone with the hand raised. Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> Est-ce que vous avez des questions pour nos intervenants? Oui, j'ai une question. Allez-y. Oui, je m'appelle Ouezo Lélé, je travaille pour TFM, je suis basé en RDC. À l'introduction, euh, j'ai écouté pays francophone, font moi d'abstract, de, 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 ils appliquent moins pour des événements comme euh, celui-ci. Alors, euh, je comprends que les applications doivent être faites euh, en français et... Non, pas en français, en anglais et euh, c'était quoi C'était l'autre langue là. Donc, le français ne fait pas partie de ces langues là. Alors, je, je voudrais comprendre comment quelqu'un peut-être qui euh, ne s'exprime pas très bien en français, euh, disons en anglais, pourrait appliquer pour, euh, pour cet événement euh, de, de 2022. Do you want us to respond or do you want to wait for more questions? Sorry, Liz, I can't hear you. Please, yeah, please you answer. Go. Yeah, you can, you can go because people will raise their hand. Okay. Can you, can you hear me now? Okay, great. Um, so for the abstract submissions, the submissions we at this stage, uh, because it's in a Latin American country, uh, just in terms of the capacity for people to review. We are doing it in English and Spanish, but at the forum itself, we will make sure that we have French interpretation as in, in the main plenaries. That's what, we ra what we're raising funds for. So at the forum itself, um, we will ensure to, to be as inclusive as possible of, of all languages. Liz, do you, do you want to jump in here? I mean, it so is- I think, um... Lezo, thank you so much for your question. It's really important. Language justice is important for us. It is around um, resources. And I would welcome you submitting an abstract in French. And we will, um, moving forward, think about how we um, do receive French abstracts, uh, abstracts in French, because it is a major gap. And we would like to bring you into the discourse as much as possible. So um, up until a time until we can um, receive abstracts in French, Liesl, I think we should consider receiving them via email and we will deal with them through a separate, upload them in a separate process. Because we do have par partners um, who are able to assist us in French 
abstract review. And I wonder if there is anybody in the GBV AOR um, who would be willing to assist us in uh, reviewing abstracts in French. If we can get enough folk to support us, we would be very happy to put that option up online. And we're very grateful for you raising that. Thank you. I am just putting up our email address there for, for now. So if you can email us at forums at SVRI, and then we can deal with um, kind of like all the other languages as well on a on a case by case basis. Well, as we come, we can just um, tap into Mary's network as well to assist with and now need to assist with the French. Yeah, this is Brilliant. well noted. I think that I have a job for the next month. <laughs> <That's wonderful. laughs> yes. So we can put we can put you down. Yes, please. <laughs> Abstract reviewer. Wonderful. <laughs> yes, please. Um, and we we are we do struggle with translation only because it's it, it takes resources and we are a very small NGO, and so we are grateful for any support you can give us. Um, and thank you. So there, will, there is another question in the chat. How were the experts who participated in the process identified? Thank you, Adish, it's a great question. You're talking about the research priority setting for the um, advisory group. So that in the, the, the stewardship group, that was basically technical. Um, so who had expertise in priority setting work and expertise in violence against women and violence against children, as well as, um, the, then the expert advisory group were within and through our networks. And so they, that, that was the 30 plus. So within the sort of a stewardship group and also the SRI has a, a very broad network of over 7,000 members. So within that network, we identified people who have been involved in research, who have a lot of expertise, but also represent practitioner voices. And in the global expert group, what we did was created um, a spreadsheet, a very extensive and very large spreadsheet with selection criteria, including region, expertise, um, background, knowledge, um, skills, and that's where the 500 plus came from. And with that was shared through the advisory group. So it was a, like a snowballing approach. Um, so that was how we did it. It was very systematic and took quite a bit of time. And then it wasn't just so then also, if you knew of other people that you felt were really important to, to be involved in this process, then you were able then to forward the, the survey on and, be, and, and let, let us know to include in, in the process. And Chantal, thank you for the offer to review abstracts. We appreciate that. I think there's also a question in French. Yeah, that's the that's the question that uh, Adish translated. It came from Marie Justine. Oh, okay. Merci. So you just responded. Marie Justine, <laughs> c'était quelle réponse? Il y avait encore des questions. Okay, I think that is clear. Any other question issues? So. I think that is a positive outcome also to know that where people can submit also in French. And um, knowing me, we'd be really keen to, you know, moving forward, thinking through or sharing what we've learned through the priority setting process globally and what we're doing regionally. And we will get to Africa at some stage, but I think West Africa would be great to be thinking through how will we do that and maybe use that as a pilot for different regions. Um, or sub-regions within the continent. Uh, and mm -hmm. so if that's something that the GBV AOR would be interested in, we should definitely take that forward. And we'd be very happy to share all the resources and the tools, et cetera, that we used. Okay. So Jennifer is online. I will follow up with her after the meeting. She connected later because she was in a meeting with the humanitarian office. So let me just talk with my boss a little bit more because I know, <laughs> I, know that, I know that we have a corporate engagement this year that is coming up. That's why you are meeting also with UNFP. So I don't know, Jennifer, if you have some uh, things that you already want to share. Or... Well, just to say, I missed the whole presentation. So I will listen to the recording. And I actually was um, thinking to have a conversation with you, Elizabeth, and, and Leslie as well. Um, I know that UNFPA already talked to you. So um, I think on 
looking at from the global level and the different regions, it would be good to have an interaction and in, around the humanitarian piece of yeah. it. Um, so I, I think this is great that Noemi has organized this and it might even be useful to have um, have you in a conversation with our Rigas to have all the regions at the same time, um, potentially. So yeah, and, and it's good to hear that, that, that you're also um, including the Spanish in, in Mexico, because I think that there is uh, a lot happening now on the humanitarian side in Latin America. Um, so just to say that's also very positive, but I don't wanna take away the focus from the French in this call. And it's great to see the colleagues who have joined. So definitely we'll follow up with you. Thank you, we look forward to that. No, we'd love that. Maybe I've also just put in the chat. So um, on the website, there is a little language button. So the guidelines can be seen in French. It might not be a 100% accurate, but um, it should be good enough on, on the website. So what we can just do is to work with you and colleagues to um, translate the abstract submission form into French so that you can share with your network then. because that is currently only in English and Spanish. Okay, that is very clear. So if there is not any additional question, I don't see any other hands. Uh, I will thank you. Ah, oh, no, there is Oswald. Oswald, tu as levé ta main. Uh, merci Naomi, merci chers collègues pour cette excellente présentation et toutes ces informations très importantes pour nous dans la région. Uh, pour moi, c'est une question plutôt de curiosité. J'ai déjà lu beaucoup uh, des articles et je connais beaucoup de gens qui sont engagés dans les SVRI. Mais connaissant la région, uh, je trouve que nous avons des difficultés à... Uh, Uh, d'écriture. Donc, je ne sais pas si c'est la culture ou quoi, mais les praticiens uh, qui sont très souvent des agents des, des ONG internationales, organisations de la société civile, ou agents des Nations Unies, souvent, ils n'ont pas vraiment assez de temps pour uh, la recherche, même s'ils si ils ont l'intérêt mm. là-dessus. Mais je vois que de temps mm. en temps, il y a des universités qui s'intéressent. Et je crois que c'est déjà très bien et au niveau de la région d'Afrique de l'Est, mais aussi d'Afrique de l'Ouest. Les DBVOR travaillent déjà avec certaines universités sur la question du renforcement des capacités, sur la réponse et prévention au VBG en situation humanitaire. Est-ce que vous pensez à moyen terme ou à, à plus long terme que c'est quelque chose que vous pourriez soutenir en intégrant l'aspect recherche, recherche donc euh, euh, former les gens, initier les gens, euh, sensibiliser à, 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 à les étudiants euh, ou les, les participants à ces différentes formations organisées par les GBVOA euh, sur la recherche. Je crois que ça pourrait être très utile à plus long terme pour les régions francophones. Mmh. Merci. Oswald, I, I think one, your question is both to the SVRI and the GBV AOR about how do we encourage and promote more research to be undertaken, given the limitations of time and resources that many people in, in practice really face. And what we also know in humanitarian and conflict settings, often the people on the ground aren't the ones doing the research, which is what we really want to address. We really want research to be conceived, conceptualized, undertaken by people living and working in those settings, because we think that makes it much more nuanced, much more meaningful, the research questions are better. And so I think that while you've highlighted really important issues, and yes, we would be really interested in, in having ongoing discussions and how we together address those issues. That, that being said, the we do have a capacity strengthening um, objective within the SVRI to support more research 
um, and strengthen research expertise and skills and really um, create spaces and context where people who are doing research don't leave, right, and go and live, work somewhere else or go and work in a high income country or a university based in the north. And so we are trying to ensure that there are research resources within the, the global south or lower middle income countries, both through our grant making, but also advocacy with funders around making sure the research resources go to people based in lower middle income countries. And we would really love to share those advocacy messages with you and the tools that we've developed to share that message. Again, we also are developing some online courses, which we are going to be only delivering initially in English, but we are fundraising for translation into French and Spanish around um, ethics, around research translation, using your research findings for impact, around violence against children measurement and tools, also around um, collective care um, and issues around um, supporting and addressing trauma amongst people doing research. It really doesn't address the gap that you highlighted around having time and resources to do the research, but we are step-by-step step trying to address that issue. And if we've got any great ideas or models that you're aware of, um, we would be open to having discussions on that. I know that there are pockets of excellence being done in East and Southern Africa and, and also West Africa to work with universities and encourage young students to be writing and researching on this issue. And we are working with universities around that, but we need to do much, much more. So thank you for raising that up. We, we have a few good universities in France. We have the, um, the University in Dakar who has the Women, Peace and Security Master. Uh, we have in uh, Kinshasa the psychologist department who was working on violence against women and MHPSS uh, back in 2019, and they were wanting to develop more, but it's, they have challenge in getting funding and getting partnership. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's, uh, that's something that we definitely need to work a little bit more in this region with the GBV IUR, but is in general something that is really worth of reflection for actors, UN agencies, like uh, NGOs working with the, in the context to build some sustainability, like yeah. linking with the university around in your context. And we have a few like states or like uh, Benin, uh, Cameroon, uh, Senegal, Nigeria, they are very good universities. So they, they, they build the intelligentsia in the region, Abidjan. So we should exploit these doors. Yeah, just to add Nomi out, our kind of principles or our values around um, grant making is to provide grants for research consortiums led by institutions in low middle income countries. So there's a it's it's great if if the consortium wants to include a northern based partner, but our preference and a, you know sort of a gold standard for us is that the funding goes to low middle income country based researchers and practitioners. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> that has been great. We have five minutes to the end, so we can uh, say thank you fully uh, for this great event. Very helpful for us. Um, and we will follow up. Uh, I have some homework also. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank we you are very so much. grateful for the opportunity. And you can open the mic if you want to say hi to all the participants. And uh, we are finishing the event. Thank you. Merci, Noemi. Thank you. Thank you. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, everyone.